How are we going, everybody? Look what I'm doing. Hey, am I feeding the plants or am I feeding the soil? Well, in my mind, I'm feeding the plants. That's right. And I'm feeding them because they're always hungry. <laughs> I'm feeding the soil. That's what I'm doing. I'm feeding the soil because we're trying to build the microbiome in the soil. We're talking about the microbiology that exists within the soil that work with your plants. Now, today's topic is controlling pH and understanding what pH is. So pH, it's the potential hyd of hydrogen available in the soil, and it can vary in two ways. So you've got hydrogen ions, which will cause it to be acidic. So if you've got a high level of hydrogen ions, you'll get a reading of acidity levels. And if you've got a high level of hydroxide ions, it'll bring you the alkalinity up. Well, it'll give you an alkaline based soil. So pH basically is, in basic terms, the measurement of acidity and alkalinity in your soil. So let's go through that. You've got a garden bed, be it flowers or vegetables, or maybe combined as well. Now you may have some plants in there, for example, a lemon tree stuck in the middle of the garden bed, which loves acid, or let's say a camellia, for example. Then you want to plant some lavenders, which prefer to be alkaline, slightly neutral. They don't want the same acidity level as camellias. How can we plant two plants in the same garden bed, or two more plants, especially when you're doing multi-species planting, a variety of plants from different family groups that all require different levels of pH? How can we balance the soil when you've got all these root systems interconnecting. You can't, and we shouldn't be. And look, in the past, we're talking years ago, I used to think about pH and getting it, you know, acid loving plants with acid soil and alkaline loving plants with alkaline soil. And I bet you've all walked into the garden center at one stage in your life and said, look, I've got a very acidic soil. What do I add into it to make it more alkaline? They'll give you something soluble. And rightly so, that's what they have. It's alkaline, it's, it's acidity, sorry. You give, them some, you give them some garden lime. You may get some sulfur if your soil is very alkaline. So you, you can adjust the pH yourself, but we shouldn't have to, and we shouldn't be. And especially with using soluble items or inputs like sulfur and garden lime, dolomite, gypsum and the likes. They will give you a false sense of reading. And the reality is pH doesn't change overnight. It may change when you first apply because you're using something soluble, but over time, once that depletes and washes out, because that's what happens with soluble products, they wash through the soil and they disappear. It goes back to its original state. It may become acidic, acidic again if it was acidic to start with. It's not our a duty or job to change the pH. Our job is to look after the life in the soil and make sure they've got the right comfort zones with their blankets on top and their straws and things like that. And you feed the microbial count in the soil so you can populate that better, which in turn, they communicate with the plants. Now you've heard me say this before and many others. Plants communicate with microbes. Yeah, that do, they do. They go, hey, I need a little bit of this. I need a little bit of that nutrient, you know, might want some ammonium, they may want some potassium, they may want it to be a bit more acidic because they're an acid loving plant and their root systems connecting with the microbes in the soil saying, we need this soil to become more acidic. And guess what? They do it for you, providing you are looking after the soil and the health of your soil correctly, not using those chemically based synthetic fertilizers that are soluble or slow release, which basically in my books, this is my take on it. They're antibiotics. They kill the life in your soil. They don't populate it. They give you a false sense of security, thinking the plant's going to grow big, strong and healthy, where in fact it's vulnerable to all sorts of pests and diseases and environmental changes, factors that can cause a plant to go backwards. And if they haven't got the immunity in them, well, they get infested, they get attacked, and they start to show signs of wear and tear. And what do we do? We run to the garden center again and buy a chemical of some sort to treat it again. So we're treating the symptom, not realizing the cause is in the soil. It's the soil that needs to be treated and taken care of. And it's not garden lime, and it's not gypsum. You know, and at times, it's not a fertilizer at all. It's really conditioning the soil that you've got the right amount of moisture and airflow in the base and texture. So you've got a good amount of food, organic matter breaking down so the microbes and the composting creatures can digest. And then they build their immunity and get their minerals, which they feed to your plants. Now, if they don't exist, your plants aren't getting those minerals. They're only going to get what? Have a look at the packet that you have of a fertilizer. It will have more times than not, three letters, NPK. Three nutrients, let's call it that. That's all you're giving your plants. Now, I don't remember the last time 
that our bodies or a plant can live off just three nutrients. Let's talk about bread, milk, and water. Live on that. Three different foods. Let's call them that. That's what they are. Pick your favorite, three fa favorites. Single, you know, a capsicum, a piece of bread and a slice of cheese. You can't live on that. You need a, a wide spectrum of minerals to take in to build the gut biome. And that's where it all starts, in here and in there. And the only way you're going to do that is by looking after the soil. So now I'm feeding superfood, and this is a bucket full of microbial life, folks. It's got all sorts of good goodness in it, and it's got the chitin as well. And this stuff here triggers the microbes to kick into gear and gives the plant the strength to be able to warn off any pests or diseases that may become prevalent in the garden. Now, we talk about black grit. Well, black grit will balance the pH in your soil. Now, I sound like a hypocrite, don't I? But do you know how it does it? Not with water, because if I filled this bucket up with the bucket, uh, with water, it would sit in there like a, a handful of sand does on the beach when water goes over it. It hydrates a little bit, it swells out a little bit, and then it re-solidifies again, because it's a silicon base, you know, rock phosphate. That doesn't release, release the nutrients to the plant. That can only break down when there's microbial activity in your soil, and they will digest this and then take it in and then balance it and give you the calcium that your plants need as well. So unlike other soluble amendment fertilizers, which when you add water, obviously, as I expressed, they are soluble, they wash in, they wash away, plants take them up, they bypass the soil's life, the count of what goes in, in, there, in there. So if you want to lift the life in your soil, put minerals that are non-soluble like black grit and use compost, superfood, or our planting mix, which is basically a, a bag full of life. It's food for the earth. That's what it is. So when your garden bed's growing, let's, let's just do this quickly just before I go. This is my lemon. This is my lavender. This is my capsicum, let's say, and we've got some other plants in here, but they all have a different pH requirements. And you know what will happen? If you got it right and the soil is active and your plants are thriving and you've got different plants growing with different pH requirements, in the root zone, in the root zone of the tree, you do a pH test of that, you'll find it'll be more acidic in that space there. That's because the tree is connecting and communicating with the microbes to get that to be adjusted. And if you go next to the plant, next to the tree, like a lavender, let's say this was a lavender, which likes it to be more alkaline, uh, neutral to alkaline, you do a test there. Within that space there, you'll find that this will have a slightly more alkaline base or neutral base. And that's how it works. In between the plants, you'll find the soil may be neutral, but under the plant or in the root ball of the plant, it should be correct. And if it isn't, it means your soil is not active. It's not alive. It's not thriving. It's not populating. You need to fix that. You don't run for a soluble bloody whatever you want to call them to throw it down and think you fixed it because you're just treating the symptom. It's not fixing the problem. And the problem is in the soil. I'm starting to repeat myself. So feed your soil, not your plants. Even though you've got stuff in your hand and you've got plants in the garden, you're still feeding the soil. Even the liquid feed, we call them a biostimulant, providing they are clean, they haven't been tampered with, with other fillers and fatteners and colorings, because that does exist in this world today too as folks. So you've got to do your research, check out my products, research me till the cows come home. If I'm doing something wrong or saying something that's not quite right or selling you a product or providing advice on something that's not quite right, please, please, please share your advice. Be respectful because we're here to learn and share. That's all that it's all about for me. And for me, well, I love to eat it out of my soil, I mean, out of my garden, which is my soil, basically, and I know what goes into it, and then I know what's going to go into me, and that way I stay healthy. Haven't been to the doctor's touch wood, because I'm going to share you this information. I haven't been to a dentist for years. Yeah, I need to straighten some teeth, but I don't do any of that. I don't need to. I look after my own health, unless I get hit by a truck. Not going to happen. Otherwise, my medical health, so far, so good. And I hope and bless that everybody else is the same. And if you're not, start opening your eyes to the bigger world to understand better of what you're putting into your body to better yourself and your health. Check out our website, thesilliesgarden.com. All our outlets are functioning. Thurbidon's closing in about a week's time, folks, on the 11th. So take advantage of the major specials. From Eva Silly, Maresi.